Mr. Hammy Hunters, and here we are. It's been a couple of weeks since I've seen you because I haven't even managed to go on a dig because it's been really busy. Um, and you'll see by my attire today, I'm dressed up, I'm not out on a dig today either. I'm actually here at the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum, and it's a fines open day. And we're go I'm going to go in and take in my coins and hopefully meet Dr. Natasha Ferguson from the Treasure Trove who's going to take us through the finds process and show us what we do with our coins when we find them. So just follow me in guys. Hello YouTubers and this is Dr. Natasha Ferguson yeah. from the Treasure Trove otherwise known as TT. So Natasha can you tell me first of all why is it a good idea to get our finds recorded? Well, what we, in Trish Trove, when you're finding archaeological objects, you are making a really important contribution to our knowledge of Scotland's past. So it's great for you, um, in terms of it, it's your legal responsibility, in a way, to report your objects into Trish Trove mm -hmm. law. Um, technically, these objects are crown property, but they're crown property so that we can ensure that they end up in museum collections, particularly if they're of archaeological significance. So they can be enjoyed um, by everyone, and right. members of the public, but also so they're accessible for research and, and display as well. Um, but it's a great to, to be able to report your finds um, is, is something that's, that's, that's quite important, so that we can be able to see the archaeology across Scotland and actually right. what's been found. And I take it you don't want to see every horseshoe I find, because I find a lot of horseshoes. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of objects out there that are yeah. quite modern, new things that have been done in mm -hmm. the 18th, 19th so what, century. So what's the, the age range? Of? Well, actually, Treasure Trove covers all ages, um, so it's way early to prehistory up to quite quite modern right. day, uh -huh. and I, and it covers any um, any composition, so it could be metal, uh, base metal, precious metal stone and even some organic materials as right. well. Right. So we have quite a broad range of objects that we would um, look to claim as treasure or, or at least recognise as archaeologically significant. Yeah. But to help you along with that we have these posters here which you can see. Oh, all right. just, uh, and these, these are just identifying objects that we would say what you maybe not maybe not think of being as, as archaeologically yeah. significant. Uh -huh. So this is just a wee guide. Um, so that if you do find something you might think actually I've got one of these, I didn't think that I need to report that. Um, and you can find these posters on our website. Right. Um, and also leaflets as well, which provides a little bit more information about the about the treasure trove process. Okay? Excellent. So that's on our on our new our new website. One thing that we say to people as well is just, just send us an email, just send us an image yeah. of the object and I can make an initial assessment of it and let you know whether you want to report it or not. And actually if you're just starting out yeah. with metal detecting, you might be coming across a lot of objects that someone as experienced as yourself might recognise quite quickly as being modern. Right. But occasionally it might not be as obvious as that. So just give us a wee email and we'll let you know. Yeah. Well I, I tend to rely on the more experienced metal detectors like um, Toddy when we, uh -huh. when we do Toddy's digs. Um, so I run to the mods to Toddy and that. Now, right. I've filled in these, I don't know if I've done it properly or not. Great. Okay. That's, that's super. Um, so they, are these all from the same? The, this was all from, um, Toddy had a dig mm -hmm. um, just at the start of the year there and there was something like 30 hammer coins or 40 hammer coins right. came up over a few days. Uh -huh. So uh, all in the same area or across all, the all in the same farm area. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I have put down the reference numbers. I believe that's important. Yes, that is important. What we what we we, we need quite accurate find spots. Right. Um, so what we would recommend to people is if you're going out into the field, I have a handheld GPS with you. Right. There's a lot of meth sectors now have GPS built in um, into the machines, which are which is brilliant. Uh -huh. um, but also a lot of them have smartphones that have yeah, GPS in them too. Well, and what we, what we need to know is where objects have been found so we can understand the context. Right. And we can also understand the spatial context. So if you're finding a spread of coins, for example, uh -huh. you know, from that information can we say, is it a scattered hoard? Right. Or is it just something that that has built up over over centuries. Um, but also, the, it, it, to have the fine spot, there may be other objects that might come up 
in the future as well. Um, right, right. And also we want to be able to tie it in with the, the surrounding yeah. the surrounding landscape. So for archaeologists or for, for the understanding of archaeological records, it is quite important to um, to, to have that, that geographical information because yeah. that's all part of understanding the, the past. And, and the I knowledge. suppose because I found in perhaps twenty years ago somebody else had found something. Well, to know that happens because no, we've, we've had um, you know, we had a, a coin hoard that was found um, in 1923, right? And a metal detectors came along, uh, obviously, you know, nearly 100 years later, and found some more coins. And we were able to say, well, actually, that's actually part of a coin hoard that was found right. know, maybe 100 years right. ago. So, so things you don't, can, you things don't can tend come to up. Think yeah, along those lines. Things come up. Now, I didn't. Clean them with Brillo pads or anything like that. Is it best to leave my coins? You're, you're asking all the right questions, Alex. This is great because actually what we would say is um, not to clean anything apart right. from maybe just to just to get the initial yeah, sort of water, sort of just a little bit of water. A wee bit of water over that, as um, much as I did. Yeah, too. and uh, and just just to brush off. Uh -huh. What we, we you, you can damage objects if you if you brush too hard. Right. Um, the, the material might be quite quite soft. Things like enamel, for example, you know, so if you've got a medieval harness pendant here, yeah, you've got uh -huh. very, very fragile enamel on top of it. Right. If you're scrubbing all the soil off that, that enamel might just take the colour off it. Might, might just peel off completely and we lose that. So um, and also things like you don't add things like oil to them. Um, right. It's a bit of a myth that olive oil will help preserve yeah, objects. I've heard that so occasionally objects will come in and you can sort of oh, seems to put some olive oil on that. So if you just if you just a wee a wee wash with water, um, and, and and if it needs conservation, you'll do that right. as well. So we'll advise you on that. And if the coins are of historical value to yourself, do you keep the coins or well, with what, what's the process well, then? I mean, with coins um, or anything. As well, yeah, no, absolutely. So what we need to look at is the archaeological significance objects. Yeah. Um, so if we feel that it, it's, it's significant enough that it belongs in a museum collection right. for everyone to, to research and enjoy, then that's the purpose of the treasury process, is, is to make sure that those objects are available for yeah, everyone. Yeah, for everybody to, to enjoy them. Now with coins, if they come up as single finds, uh -huh. um, if you have a medieval coin and you've just got a little of them, we would want to record that, because actually the information that comes from that is quite important. Because actually, believe it or not, 30, 40 years ago, before metal detecting came in, um, it was assumed that in Scotland there really wasn't a monetary economy because we weren't finding many coins. Yeah, uh -huh. But since metal detecting has come up with quite a high volume of coins, uh -huh. it's really changed the picture of how we look at the monetary economy of medieval Scotland. Right. So it is quite important to be able to record the weights of them and also um, where they've been minted. Um, I'm happy to do that and then disclaim them and send them back to you. Yeah. Now one thing that we need to establish is whether these coins have been deposited as a, a coin hoard. Right. Uh -huh. um, and this is when scattered coins get quite complex because mm -hmm. if you are out metal detecting on your own you might be able to spot if you're finding close concentrations yeah, uh -huh. of them. If you're out with maybe five or six people and you're not maybe seeing what the other people are doing, yeah, it can be very easy that, that you don't recognise that pattern of a, a coin board. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's something that we, that we really wanted to, if you, if you are going on to a dig or a rally, uh -huh. just make sure that you maybe speak to the organiser, like Toddy, uh -huh. for example, and, and say, I think they might we'll come up with quite a lot of coins here. Yeah, uh -huh. And he'll be able to coordinate that yeah. and, and, and establish whether actually you need to have whether they need to be recorded as a, as a group, just to, just to inform me, because if I'm maybe not seeing, I'm not on the ground, so I'm not yeah. got a good reporting things. Maybe. Well, usually, Tori, if, if there are a, a few coins coming up in the one area, yeah. you close off that area and make sure yeah. It's, yeah. it's all done Absolutely. by the book. Great. You know, one thing I would actually say is, um, Alex, with this, just to save you a wee bit of time, you can actually just do one reporting form for one site oh, right. in an area. Okay. So it doesn't need to be for each, each object. Right. Um, so for this one, you know, you can put, um, 
you know, you can't just actually just put one forward. Yeah, because they were all on the same file. Yeah, that's, that's great, uh, yeah. Probably just a field or two, but the difference. That's it, and what you can do is just list in the back, you know, the, right, the different okay. coins and finds. As long as I can, as long as I can connect the fine spot with the coin. Right. So what I'm saying is, you can put in the fine spot. Put the fine on spot the, on the, the fine yeah. Band. Okay. So being be able to connect that object with the fine spot is quite important. Right. Too. Excellent. All right. Right. Great. That's perfect. It's not that I've found a lot. To, <laughs> I mean, this is the first time I've ever had to come in and hand ah, in anything. Well, that's great. But what we do, we have these fine days in the Kelvin Grove Museum five times a year. Right. And it's just to make sure that we get broaden our reach and make sure that. Um, as many people, we can reach as many people as right. possible. So you don't need to know within a week or two to uh, find, it's okay to maybe wait a month to the find stay or something like that? You can't, just give an email, yeah. Right. If, you just, okay. if you just throw me an email and say, I found this object, can I report it this next find stay? Perfect, that's right. brilliant. Excellent. That's what that's what, that's what these are, days are here for, just to make sure it's convenient for you as well. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, come we've, got, we've got these wee cards for your wallet. Well, right. We've got some information, so if we're out on, in the field, um, we've got all our details, your email addresses. Right. We've also got this little, oh, like this really. yeah, got this little snazzy scale bar here, uh -huh. so that if you're sending photographs, so you can Just put that on the Yeah. So what do you do now? Do you right, so what I'll do now is I will record these in our database uh -huh. and I will send you an email with the reference number of the daybook on that, just for your own records. Uh -huh. And I'll give you just a little brief description of what, what it is, just uh -huh. so you have that too. Then what we'll do is we'll look to put that through the Trish Troll process and feel that this is... If I'm looking at these final spots and I feel that is part of a standard board, uh -huh. Because that's a lot of archaeological significance, we'd like to claim that as treasure trove, so they yeah, can be able to into the museum. Um, and uh, we would then allocate that to a, a panel meeting, um, which happens three times a year. And that's where we um, museums have an opportunity to apply for the objects that they can have them in their, their museum. Um, so it's not, it's not an immediate process, because no. obviously we have all these so different So you'll take them away today? Uh simple process, painless and simple. So that's me today, finds are in, everything's done, by the book, and tomorrow I've got a dig, I think we're up Fife or Dunfermline way, so Toddy's digs tomorrow, let's hope for another hammy.